Hi, I'm Morgan, and this video is a follow-up to my previous extremely popular video, should be linked here, of how to land a model rocket like SpaceX does. So if you haven't seen already, go away and watch that video. Come back here, because I got a lot of comments, I got a lot of questions, a lot of really, um, really smart questions on that video. And one question kept coming over and over and over. Krusty the Clown says, how can only two motors working in one plane control this rocket in three dimensions. Uh, Burned M says, but how does it get the rocket closer to the tower? So I guess I wasn't really clear when I showed in that video how the rocket works. So here we are. This is the Spread Eagle rocket and it has X on the front. So that helps me line it up when I'm building it that I know I've got the X's lined up. It also means this is the X axis, the forward axis, moving towards the tower. So I already showed in the previous video that the, the motors do this so that I can have my motors point away from each other to reduce thrust and descend. But what I didn't make clear was the motor also moves this direction. So the motor rotates around the X axis. We point X forwards. This is called rotation around the X axis. This being the Y axis, allows the motor to rotate that way. So that question was repeated over and over. So many people wanted to know, how do I get the rocket to go this way? How do I stabilize it so that it remains vertical, both X and Y? So that's how it's done, is that the motors each are able to move two directions. If you look carefully, there's actually two servo motors, little servo here for the Y direction, little servo here controls the X direction. So that's how I'm able to control the rocket in three dimensions. And just so many, so many questions about that. A related question came up a little less often was, how are you controlling body roll from Randy St. Clair? So given the, the four dimensions, I'm now able to move these motors. If I move the two Y motors opposite each other, that gives a roll moment so I can make the rocket roll whichever way I want it to go and that's very important because it's literally impossible to get these lined up precisely I could not possibly engineer these to be exactly vertical with zero roll so really what it does is it detects the roll as it's going up as it comes off the pad it'll come off with a bit of a spin a bit of a rotation that's detected by the IMU this is the inertial measuring unit this has both acceleration, gyros, and a little magnetometer in there. So the gyros measure the rate of rotation, how fast this is spinning, and the, the magnetometer is measuring the vector for the uh, local magnetic field, the Earth's magnetic field. So if it says Earth's magnetic field is going this way, then it's able to say, well, now I'll keep that level horizontal compared to this. So that's how I can measure roll and then I can use the control system on the rocket to adjust the two Y motors to be able to correct for that rotation as the rocket goes up. Another really popular question I got was which GPS are you using? I claim that the GPS got an accuracy of eight millimeters. Uh, this is a GPS there that gives you the, the name of it. It comes from SparkFun. It uses the UM980 unit that they buy from Unicore. There's the actual GPS unit there, and it has an antenna connection here, so we have an antenna. It's very important to get the right antenna for this GPS because it's using all of the available GPS satellites up there. It's looking at the American GPS, of course. It's looking at the Chinese Beidou system. It's looking at the European Galileo system. And they all use slightly different frequencies. So your standard GPS antenna on top will not receive all of those frequencies. So I purchased $95 antenna from SparkFun, of course, and they sell the correct antenna that goes with this. So that gives us our position in the sky. The last question that was also quite popular, um, I guess coming from people who, uh, who know their model rockets and know that a regular model rocket motor burns in one or two seconds. They normally burn very fast because the goal is to get the rocket moving quickly so that the tail fins on the back of the rocket get some aerodynamic speed. They can work against the atmosphere and keep it flying straight. Uh, this is a much rarer sort of a motor. 
It's called a H13 ST-P. This motor is intended for very long duration burns. So this burns for more than 13 seconds. It's an unusual configuration inside the motor. Normally a solid rocket motor like this has a hollow core down the center of it and you light it at the top. So you push your igniter wire all the way along up to the top. It ignites at the top and the hot gases rushing down the center core ignite all of the length of the rocket all at once. So in the first few milliseconds after ignition, the entire core is burning along its whole length. And if you look at the diameter, you see it'll burn from the center out. And that takes just a second, maybe two seconds, depending on the motor, to burn from the core out to the, the periphery. So it takes all of the mass of this and turns it into thrust very, very quickly. This one is an end burner. That is, we light it at the bottom and it's solid. There's no hole down the center. So it has to burn progressively along this direction. So if it took two seconds to burn this distance, four, six, eight, 10, 12, that's how long this takes to burn. Very unusual motor, but it's just perfect for what I need for long duration, low thrust to get this guy up in the sky and back down on the ground. So uh, just because I love showing it off, let's watch that landing one more time. Two, one. Hi Morgan, fly safe.